A story mixed with a civil war, an oil boom, coups and counter coups, fast increase in population, economic growth, a long standing insurgency, and many more. Currently going through its longest spell of democracy, from 1960, there have been about 30 years of military rule with short spells of democratic rule, which were cut short by coups, and then, its current uninterrupted spell of democratic rule from 1999 till date. It brings up questions about the pace of development for Africa's biggest economy and its achievements since stepping away from military rule. Given the resources that we have, given the potentials that we have, it would be full idea of anybody to say we are making good enough progress. But I haven't said that. Uh, one cannot say it's, it's a rule yet under the civil administration that we are in now. But I haven't said that in no way, shape, or form could it be compared with the, the malady that defined governance under military rule. Uh, given the enormous amount of resources that the militarians garnered and wasted, many of it, many of such resources squandered and looted. You have some of the richest Nigerians now, as we speak, being partakers of the military era. Military rule saw some level of economic and infrastructural growth in Nigeria and also some level of stability with Nigeria's economy. For example, in 1999, just before the return to democracy, one dollar exchanged for 21 naira 89 cover and 88 to 90 naira in the black market. And over time, it has continuously climbed to the current rate of about 450 naira to the dollar. Well, I think uh, such comparison will be very difficult, particularly when you are dealing with nation building. Uh, it was not as if uh, military rule happened outside uh, the Nigerian social milieu. You know, it's it just like trying to say how did we fare under colonialism. Uh, but what has happened is that uh, the military rule, just like as it sounds, being a dictatorship, uh, truncated what would have enabled uh, appropriate orientation, the development of appropriate skills and competencies, which you know is only attainable in an environment where the people freely decide how they need to be governed. Democracy may have come with its challenges, as many believe with increased GDP and freedom, the nation should have been able to achieve a lot more with infrastructure and better living standards for its people. What has happened, which is the effects of military rule and which have affected governance in Nigeria, is that you discover that governance even under democratic rule is still being conducted through executive ability. The nation's leadership selection process also has been continually questioned. A look into the pace of growth on the military and democratic rule. We must put into perspective the structures for development in both eras. Both can be judged to have had their positive and negative aspects. To be honest with you, just opposing military rule with civilian rule, especially when when we have seen what military administration bequeathed other countries like Indonesia, like Brazil, you know, we've seen what military administration bequeathed countries like Argentina, you know, and you want to, you want to compare the malady that was defined as military administration in Nigeria as governance? Look at what, look at what a single party entity, so the nearest to military administration, look at what it's doing in China today. 
Look at how China has been transformed in 30 years. The same 30 years that military spent in Nigeria with no, no tangible results for it. A few opinions believe that Nigeria would have moved at a faster pace if it was still under military rule. Some also argue that Nigeria is still very young in its democratic spell and can't be judged to have failed. It is 60 years after Nigeria's independence. Lessons must be learned from other countries as we move forward, finding a path to a greater nation. Welcome back. You're still watching the special broadcast from Plus TV Africa. That was a report by one of our correspondents, Osaoge Ogbomo, who did a report on politics and governance, and that will set the tone for our conversation. Yeah, we're being joined now virtually um, all the way from Kaduna, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have uh, Dr. Yunusa Tanko, a politician, a political activist, who will be dissecting these issues of politics and governance. Good morning, Dr. Yunusa. Good morning, Good morning Nigerians. Thank you for having me. Happy Independence Day. And happy Independence Day to you too. All right, we're also uh, joined by uh, Chukuma Innocent, who is the country director for Ford Foundation uh, West Africa. He is also a globally renowned uh, human rights advocate. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Chukuma. Thank you for having me. All right. Okay, let's get the conversation started. Let me start with Dr. Yunisa. I don't know whether you had the privilege of watching the report we just played now. Uh, but um, if you, oh good, so let's look at some of the issues raised by the correspondent. He did mention that some believe that it's still a nascent democracy, so we should be excused. Sixty years cannot be compared with uh, more than two hundred years of uh, 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 independence that America has enjoyed, because that usually comes to our mind as a way of comparing what we've done and what we haven't done. So, do you share that sentiment that? Uh, let us not overflog this 60-year-old man. <laughs> not at all. Um, the truth about it is that I, I'm, I'm a realist. I'm a realist, and I don't believe in trying to uh, try to pan a beat a situation. When you have some problems, sometimes when people have a headache, uh, they don't want to really find out the root of their, uh, their problem. They will continue taking Panadol, Panadol all the time. And then the only thing that Panadol will do is just kind of reduce the pain for a period. Ah, let, look, let's be, real, let's be truthful to ourselves. We have, as a people, we have not been able to wake up. We are still crawling. And you can't tell me that a year old person will be crawling. Uh, he's already close to his death. God forbid me. But, he needs to start working. He needs to start mobilizing. He needs to start communicating. Nigerians have so much problem. And the problem start with us as a people. One of the key issues I keep I usually mention is that we don't love ourselves. And there is this particular national interest that is lacking in the system. Point in time, we were, we were doing well, we were picking up. Some would say probably during the uh, era when we were having problems and then probably uh, during the era in which each of the regions were surviving on their own, we were a little bit better. And then some would say, no, true federalism will help in a situation like this. Probably a lot of people have grown. But the truth is that the key indices of democratic system which is lacking in our, in our governance, has driven us down the line. I was of the opinion that at this point in time, we should have gone beyond this. Uh, Ali Mazori was making an allusion to some certain fact. He said, why would other countries who are moving to the moon, we are trying to find our way to the villages. Even the villages we are trying to get our route to those particular villages is difficult. If you okay. have to go to my route, my village now, you need a donkey to get there. So. For the fact, since after the Civil War, we've not been able to carry along the people from the Southeast. We have not been able to carry along some of the people from the North Central. 
We've not been able to carry along so many people from the West. We've not been able to carry along with all the diff different regions. Because as you see every day, every different kinds of agitation is coming up. Right. As of yesterday or so, I was told that the Oduzma would declare a state of their own nation, probably today. So we can't say that the country has really grown or found its foot. Right. There's still so much. In fact, we need to go back to the drawing board. All right. Let's th thank you, Dr. Tanko, for your thoughts there. Let's bring in uh, Mr. Chukuma on the other end to hear what he says. Uh, wh what are your thoughts? I mean, on my way this morning uh, to work, but part of the conversation that was going on on radio is the Nigeria of my dream. You know, people saying, I want to see this Nigeria, this sort of Nigeria where the roads are good, where light is stable, where true leadership is all that works. I'm wondering, today we are 60. What are your thoughts and what kind of Nigeria should we be looking forward to on the background of what Dr. Yunusa had just uh, explained? In, in my view, uh, and to put it uh, simply, this past uh, 60 years, we have experienced um, a case of mis uh, picture of few successes and many failures. And the successes essentially focuses on one thing, which is human capital development. Uh, if we begin from the um, first uh, uh, six years of independence, where, as uh, my brother in uh, Dr. Tanko said the regions drove economic development and really invested a lot in human capital development. And over the decades and years, it has come down to parents really working their back to death to see their children through, to the extent that today there is no country in the world where Nigerian experts are not distinguishing themselves, are driven largely by young people. But on the back of those uh, few successes, there's also many failures. Today, Nigeria is the poverty capital of the world. Today, Nigeria, in terms of uh, terrorism in death, is number three. It's actually, with the possible exception of Iraq and Afghanistan, Nigeria is even rated worse than, um, than Syria. Uh, Nigeria is the worst place to be a woman in the world in terms of uh, uh, maternal care and, and, and what have you. We are more divided today than we have ever been. And uh, to the point that today, Every, if you look at all the headlines, uh, it, it comes down to one summary. With Af will Africa's most populous nation remain united? And likely because since independence, we've not been able to keep the multitude of our people, different ethnic groups, mm -hmm. united and happy. And how do we begin to address it for the next 60 years? It actually begins with a leadership that is not conflicted. You know, we have had many leaders that claim to be nationalists, but once they go into the office, they are conflicted between their national affiliation and their micro or subnational affiliation. And often at the end of the day, the subnational affiliation gets upper hand. Um, Peter Eke wrote an article in 1975 titled um, uh, Two Publics uh, that Nigerian nation and many uh, Africans we are faced with two publics, the national public and the narrow ethnic public. And often the narrow ethnic public gets upper hand. So how do we blend this to create a true Nigerian? Because until we begin to create, what, what, what is our own idea of a true Nigerian? And for me, it's somebody who puts Mary's first. I'm not saying there shouldn't be affirmative action to help those who can catch up, but there should be a merit-based system that should reward excellence that should make sure that we put our best hands in the best places and have mechanism of helping those who can meet up to meet up. And this is not just uh, alongside the, uh, you know, ethnic or national, even in families, we have ways of encouraging kids according to their own ability. So when we be begin to make the average Nigerian feel that Nigeria is a place that he or she can actually self-actualize, we'll begin to transform this huge human capital that we have into national development because Nigeria is losing the best of its hands 
to other places in the world okay. because we don't know how to harness Mr. them. Mr. Chukuma, uh, that's a very, very deep uh, diagnosis you've done. Okay. And uh, that will really set the tone for our conversation. Okay. But we'll quickly go on a short break. Uh, we're going to be joined by another guest who is going to join us here live in the studio. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back shortly. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.